Kwaku Adebole served half a seven-year sentence for fraud relating to $2.3 billion of unauthorized losses at his former employer, UBS. Now out of prison and facing deportation, he says pressures on traders remain. I caught up with him at the FT Banking Summit in London to find out what he's working on now. In the 18 months since my release from prison, um, whilst fighting against deportation from the United Kingdom, um, I've been doing a lot of work with universities around the country. I'm just trying to help people to look behind the headlines of what happened, to try and understand what can be learnt, uh, what lessons can be taken away. So what lessons can be learned? I mean, what is the takeaway for the banking industry? Um, well, I, mean, I think at the time what we suffered from was this incredible complexity within the institution, but also there was a great deal of pressure on us to generate profits from that complexity. Um, and we didn't necessarily have the resources we, need, we needed to achieve, to achieve what we were being asked to achieve. Um, but I mean, ultimately, this is very much about the purpose of the industry and what we were trying to do um, for the bank at the time. Mm -hmm. um, looking at the recent Wells Fargo scandal, do you think that that's the sort of problem that's going to keep happening in the banking industry if the industry doesn't stop and take a look at its incentives and look at the culture that they've created? Yeah, I, I think it's a problem not just for the finance industry. I think it's a reflection in a way of the complexity in society and in general um, in, in our industries. As we move towards increasing automation and higher speed, um, we're asking the human beings within our industries to make really difficult choices, to do really difficult things under intense pressure at incredible pace. And of course human beings are highly fallible. Um, and what happened at Wells Fargo is an example of what happens when the challenges that are, people are trying to meet are just too difficult um, and people are forced to make decisions that are you know, not necessarily the right ones. One example that um, we've spoken about before is how the airline industry, when there's a crash, for example, they're the, probably one of the best at looking at the problem and trying to figure out um, how to learn from their mistake. Is that something that the banking industry should be doing? Definitely need, we definitely need to put in uh, mechanisms for better industrial learning. You know, it's something that has been talked about quite a bit today at, at this conference. Everything is about behavioral change. People don't do things because they're bad people. They do things because they end up in a difficult context and they're trying to solve difficult problems. Usually. Usually. And I, I certainly believe that in, in, in our corporations today, that most of the things that go wrong are because people are trying to do very difficult things, not necessarily because they're bad people. Yeah. So could there be another rogue trading incident? Or do you think the banking industry, at least in the UK, has learned from uh, the mistake you made? Like I, I struggle with the term rogue trading incident or just rogue trader in general because you know if you if you take for example the Wells Fargo problem or what's happened at Tesco recently well in back in 2012 or the LIBOR stuff or even the 2008 crisis this isn't about rogue traders ultimately the driver of all that behavior is the same and what we need to get to is a point where we understand that things go wrong not because of one person but because of the system and what people are being asked to achieve to answer your question though, I think that there's absolutely scope for things to go wrong again because complexity is increasing and pressure is increasing all the time. Um, and that means that we haven't learned, we, it's difficult to learn everything that there is to learn, um, which is why I'm doing a lot of this work now to help people to understand that there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of work still to do. Mm -hmm.